go like this, all of us we are in on the table. What's the problem? I'm going to go to the table. 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 Back in the day, people who played in Bira mm. were called Gwenyambira. Mm. Gwenyambira means to tickle the Bira. I first became aware of the instrument, a musical instrument called Bira, when I was young. My uncle used to live in the villages, so when he visited, when he came to visit us in town. He used to bring the instrument and then he used to play it. It's an instrument that was used with the mainly the Shona people for thousands of years. With this instrument, they used to play it mainly as a conduit to connect with the spiritual world. They also played the mbira when they wanted to appease the spirit so that they can have rains coming. They played the mbira when there was a funeral. They also played in Bira, it's just um, to just to celebrate life. So these people, they, were, they had their connection with the spiritual world. So not everybody just picked up the Bira and played it. Before the advent of the, of the missionaries, it was a day-to-day -day instrument that was used within the people. And then when the missionary came, they introduced Christianity. And then, when Christianity came, they told the people, the natives of Zimbabwe, that the practice of spiritualism is devil worship. So anything that's connected with spiritualism, it was considered worshiping the devil. So when most people were converted into, um, <clears throat> into Christianity, they shunned their own traditional beliefs. So within that time, most people were baptized, they were given English names. So people need to understand the power of words. A word can build or a word can diminish. So what the, the, most of the words that we use, that we used to say we are nothing, our culture is irrelevant. So we will name them each other where we want. Like with these words, they were used so many times within uh, the context of uh, the imperialistic forces. Zimbabwe, by that time, it was called Rhodesia, named after Cecil John Rhodes. Then when Zimbabwe got its independence in 1980, then that's when they changed the name to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is Zimba Remabwe, which means it's the house of stones. People of Zimbabwe came to a point where they wanted to stop um, colonialism because there was colonialism at that time, which means that um, the country was divided into white, black, Indians, mixed race people. So within that, they were saying that white people were more superior. The people were the lowest of the lowest. So the land was also divided unfairly. The most horrible land was um, given to the white people or the colonial masters. And then the less horrible land, black people were just put into one small, small little place where there, there was no rain and then they stayed there. So people took up arms and they said, we need to get our land back. So by them trying to get the land back, they started connecting with their spiritual world. They started looking for a meaning within themselves to say, what are we, who are we as a people? So the only connection that they had was through their traditional so then that's when they picked up the mbira again and then they started playing the mbira. It's a rallying point for people to connect with their ancestors so that they can give them the strength to go to war and get the land back. So after that, Zimbabwe got its independence and then the mbira kind of took a bit of a backseat, but now it's just um, it's sort, of, sort of like evolving into the you know, mainstream popular culture. People just play the music, you know, within them, with their music groups or functions or infuse it with different kind of genres of music and different instruments. It's now being taught to schools and then people are also infusing with different 
musical instruments, different musical styles. But also for it to actually be empowered, I think it starts from the mind. When I say from the mind, is people have to start loving themselves. People have to start embracing their history. Because if you don't embrace your history, you will always keep this, um, <clears throat> the mentality that was taught to you by your slave masters or your colonial masters to say you cannot love yourself. So taking the instrument, using the instrument, embracing it, is also embracing us as a people. It's giving us the power. And also to know that you know, what we're doing right now, we're sharing with it. We are allowing it to tell the story. A lot of young people, they are embracing the instrument and they are playing and they are also infusing with the old choruses and also inventing their own new uh, vocals and lyrics. And then attaching with the, the guitar, with the drums. But I think uh, there is a lot of resurgence and there is uh, a lot of people are embracing it. But I don't really think maybe within that spiritual aspect per se, but they're, they're seeing it, they use it, just to say we are from Zimbabwe, this is our instrument. So, yeah, it's a new twist to it, which is quite um, amazing. The people are touring the world, and then they are going out there doing uh, tours and playing the bureau in front of packed houses mm, all over the world. People are becoming self-aware. See, so a person without, um, without a history, you know, you're like a tree without roots. So we need to embrace and you know go back and try to rewrite the narratives and the history that has been been lied to us about. So this is for me to grow as a person. It's also for other people to grow as people as well to tell the truth about these instruments that you don't get. I mean, in the, in the mainstream, uh, you know, media or even within the context of uh, the museums. We don't forget these objects, they were taken during a time when we were not considered equal. So they were just objects of curiosity that people would sit down on the table and just go like, I bought this from Zimbabwe or I got it from Rhodesia, you know? So they're gonna sit down when they have their dinner, drinking their pot and then they just discuss about these things as if they're nothing. It's a small um, little music instrument, but it, it is a history of an entire country. That's how powerful it is. So we wanted to tell a story. What is your fondest memory? What did you dream of when you were young? Who are the people that carried you? How did you get here? How many times do you think of escaping the museum? How do you feel living in the museum with so many other cultural objects? When was the last time you heard rain? Do you miss being played? Did the last person who played you actually know how to.